And uh, also, uh, first when we were implementing this functionality, we were using uh, uh, a year of quite uh, continuous with continuous to do systems uh, problematically. We were setting bytes variable and uh, systems, for example, area based on region. But then we found that uh, actually we can use dynamic iterator bindings and phase definition for our table components, and then basically that from depending if we came to area directly or if we came to area from region, we just substituting uh, iterator bindings and phase definition to master detail or to the or to master, and then we have filtering uh, is done automatically by ADL. So this simplifies our life because we don't need to play with bind variables, uh, we just can reuse standard master detail relationship of ADS by using the dynamic iterator binding. Uh, I think I have a blog uh, about this as well. Uh, so <coughs> it's one type of stream is the task flow that implements a hierarchical relationship. And here, for example, this uh, area, uh, area table is complex. It has lots of uh, columns and database. So we decided to implement editing of each row uh, to, to edit each row, not to uh, uh, navigate to some other page, but just we have a detail button. And when we press um, some, uh, when we press a detail uh, button, it will open it will open step of our train and uh, it will open all data in uh, editing mode and we can edit it and uh, save or cancel specific changes for specific role from the area from the current uh, train store. And you can see that all layout is uh, is kind of light and not overloaded with uh, different, um, different functionality. So it was the uh, main idea of the customer to, uh, to keep the layout clean and uh, to make it just uh, as simple as possible because uh, <coughs> because when you have a, a simple system it's uh, just, uh, the final users are it's easier to, to train them and it's easier to, to, to learn the system and it's easier to use it and system must, uh, serve, uh, must give only that functionality uh, which is needed. So from that point of view uh, you can see that uh, layout is quite clean and different kind of form is, for example, I, I will open city suburbs. And it will be like C level master detail form where users can uh, acquire and edit data. So it's, I think, such example of the system. And now I'll uh, switch to a technical topic. I'll describe uh, how we were implementing the system, and I'll just will tell you about the best and practices, and also about best best practices. And maybe during my session, I'll talk more about best practices than uh, best practices, because I believe if you know best practices, you don't do them, and uh, you don't have any choice other choice to uh, implement the good practices. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So the first topic is uh, motivation and activation in business companies. <coughs> and actually, what I'll do first, I'll go through my slides. I don't have uh, many slides. I'll talk uh, about the theoretical part, and then uh, on the same, so each slide uh, I have developed a visual for use case. And uh, I'll explain you how it works in uh, Visual and in Vex in a uh, practical way. So the first thing that you must know about uh, business components is the uh, uh, difference between perturbation and activation. So you probably know that in ADF, uh, by default, when you run uh, your ADF application, it's using a uh, stateful uh, mode, and this means that uh, ADF business components preserves uh, your data state between requests. And in case if uh, you have a uh, uh, high load of users uh, in your system, and uh, if uh, it's, there, there, is not, there is not enough uh, of uh, free uh, application model instances to serve all the users, uh, ADF is, uh, is perturbating currently inactive user data state to the database. And then 
uh, just assigning that uh, application model instance to the new user who wants to come to the system. And then when uh, the user that was previously using the same application model, when the user changed back, the uh, idea of doing statements are uh, doing exactly the same thing for the user. The perpetuating uh, application model instance of another user that is currently not active and uh, assigning that uh, application model instance to the uh, user who wants to get it. So, uh, from performance point of view, sometimes you may consider for uh, redoing screens and especially for those, for those screens that uh, don't have maybe uh, dynamic bind variables, maybe you can consider to switch <coughs> application model to stateless for those screens because it uh, greatly will improve performance. So you need to make some uh, critical performance for redoing screens. So if when you turn off application model uh, from stateless to stateless, it will not use uh, saturation activation mechanism, it will not uh, store anything to database to the application model and it will work much faster. Uh, but, okay, but in, in the most of the cases you cannot do this because then you start to experience some different problems, uh, for example, with bind variables or with query criteria, or with your, uh, it just will start to lose data between requests and you will start to get null pointer failure. So even uh, you may get as uh, advice to to consider to use stateless mode. Practically, it's uh, quite a, a, a rare situation where you can, can use usually you use default uh, stateful mode. And then later, just I'll show you uh, what uh, one use case uh, when uh, I'll simulate null pointer exception uh, with uh, and I'll explain how you may get the same null, null pointer exception if you follow some bad practice. Uh, the next thing is uh, idea of being compliance tools uh, tuning. Uh, it's uh, actually uh, what happens is that when you develop your application, everything works fine. You connect to your uh, database, you get data, it's fine. And, but then when you deploy to production, most probably in most of the cases, the uh, uh, application server administrators, they, they're not granting uh, 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 they're usually granting like maybe uh, 10 uh, or 50 av available connections to, to be available to your data source, for your Jindai data source for, uh, to be, they grant maybe 25 connections available and then if you have 20 users uh, who connect uh, and then uh, they, they just uh, uh, do some switching and uh, go away, and uh, then other users connect to the system uh, again. What happens is that by default, ADF is not uh, releasing so quick the reverse database connection, and uh, you may get into such problem that you run out of uh, available uh, database connections, and uh, users will not be able to connect to the system. But, uh, and th there are settings, screening settings in application model of ADF being components that allow to uh, minimize uh, the time to leave of application model instance, which is one hour by default to, by default to some smaller uh, value, and then uh, we can uh, we can make sure that uh, the interval when uh, unused database connection will be returned back to the pool will, will be smaller than one hour or two hours uh, by default. It's, it's, it's a typical question of the uh, logic administrators why. Uh, uh, all data, uh, why is your EDF application is using so many uh, database connections? And partly it's because uh, we, uh, we leave the whole settings for database connection pool. Okay, and uh, then uh, when you develop your, or if you're developing uh, right now your EDF application, the first thing uh, you should consider is uh, reusability, and uh, you must have some uh, common uh, to structure, common packages, common uh, objects in your application. Uh, the classical example is like an address table in database, and this address table is used across uh, multiple forms in the system. So logically thinking, you, you, you will not want to implement the same address entity uh, 